We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the addiction levels that they get uh, with all of this stuff. All right, let's turn this sucker on. And so we did this. How many devices do you have in the internet? It's amazing how many we have. These are my four little guys, girls and guys. I got a boy, girl, boy, girl, and um, they love the internet. We got a Minecrafter. We got a YouTuber. <laughs> we have a little girl who gets great grades and loves Dropbox and her laptop, and homework seems to be the fun thing for her. I wish the other three followed suit. And then my little guy just recently figured out that if you Google pictures, he likes this game, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's sort of a scary thing, but he likes to draw. So we don't let him play the Five Nights at Freddy game. That would be way too scary for a six-year-old. Uh, it's a dumb game, by the way, really, really dumb. Uh, but he loves to draw, and he's figured out that you can find things on the internet and Google them and then draw them. And so we use a lot of technology in our house with these guys. This is my wife. I totally married up, and um, she is also uh, involved in kids' stuff. She's a, a school teacher. used to teach high school. Now she's in elementary, so um, a lot of experience with kids and helping keep them safe. Now, do you guys think, I know the answer already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you guys think a child could be addicted or become addicted to a cell phone app, social media platform, or a device? Yes, everybody nods yes. If you are thinking, gosh, I really don't know. Let me just tell you the answer is yes. Since half of you are also addicted, our kids can certainly become addicted. It's the first thing you grab in the morning when you wake up. Don't lie. Cell phone, because we've got to see if our Instagram account is trending up or if we lost any friends on Facebook. We've got to check these things before coffee. It's very important. So what do these three things have in common? Facebook, a cell phone, and a slot machine. Anybody know? What drug do these three things put into our brain every time we do them? It's dopamine. It's the happy drug. We love dopamine. This is the drug we get when we exercise, when we eat. It's the drug that tells our body to go do that habit again which is why we eat again. This is the drug we get in our brain when we have sex, which is go have sex again. This is a great drug, but we're giving it to our kids in unlimited amounts because it's also the drug they get from uh, continued gameplay and social media. Little teeny amounts of dopamine. Our dopamine levels are here. When we get lots of it, it goes up here. Our body thinks this is the new normal and constantly strives to go get more. It really can be an addiction. Alcohol, smoking, gambling, and pornography all have federal age requirements. Cell phones and social media don't. These things produce habitual um, things in our children or in our adults, right? They produce problems socially, uh, physically. Uh, so do cell phones and social media. Yet, we haven't really put the kind of restrictions and regulations on them that we have these other things, which is why our kids are having some issues putting these devices down. The other happy chemicals that our brain produces, you probably recognize some of them, oxytocin, serotonin. Our brain loves these chemicals. Dopamine is the one that we need to be concerned about. It controls motivation, learning, habits, feeling rewarded. It controls the things that we want kids to, to do well when they go to school. These things have to do with school and learning. Some other things that dopamine controls, mood, attention, sleeping, thinking, moving, Seeking and reward. If, if you look at some of these things that are up on the screen and say, those are some challenging areas that we're having with our kids, link it back to dopamine, and then you can link it back to possibly too much electronics, too much cell phone, too much social media use. I already asked you this question. First thing that you grab in the morning when you wake up, for me, it's the cell phone. We don't want that. That's a sign of, okay, maybe you should have coffee and breakfast first and then check your stuff. Right now, 71% of kids in high school and middle school are reporting sleep problems. When you go to sleep at night or right before you go to sleep at night, the blue light from your device, whether it's an iPad, computer, or phone, produces melatonin. Melatonin is the same thing that we get from the sun. It's the thing that tells our body it's daytime, it's awake time, rise and shine, be alert. The phone is giving that to us. Our brain is producing melatonin. It's very difficult to sleep when your brain says, it's sunny out, stay awake. If your kids are having problems sleeping, and I bet you about half of them might be, it's probably because they're using the iPad, the phone, the computer too much right before bed. Try to take those things away before bedtime. Here's an experiment. 
Maybe refrain from this up 30 minutes before bedtime. Maybe charge the phone or the iPad in a different room. Wait until after breakfast. Try this for a week. If you can do this for a week, you're probably okay. If you can't do this for a week, you have an issue and your kids are going to follow right in line. I have an issue. I am addicted to my cell phone. I'll admit it, 12-step program, my name's Scott, I'm addicted to my cell phone. My four kids are watching everything I do. I really got to work hard to make sure I'm putting it down in front of them. Uh, we don't do it at the dinner table, we don't do it while we're driving, uh, because they're watching everything we do. When they're not around, I'm like glued to my phone. I am. You guys are too, probably. I know some of you are, because I know some of you. <laughs> social networking for parents. This is what you guys think about social networking. Right? We're all on Facebook. This is a big social networking app that most of us are using, and this is what our kids are doing on social networking. Almost everything they do on a phone or computer has some form of connecting with other people. Uh, Quizlet, you can share things. YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, all of these apps allow our kids to connect in an unbelievable way. And almost anything that they're doing on a device allows them to connect with strangers. So we have to be aware and on guard of what they're doing on the internet. And now the fun stuff. How do we keep them safe? On the third page of our handout, or maybe it's the second page, there's a list of programs. Most of them are free. I love software. I love free stuff. And I'm going to show you, tell you what's the good stuff. Now, Josh and I have been doing this a really long time. I'm working on 17 years. Before I even had kids, I was helping parents put stuff on their phones or on their computers to keep them safe. And I can tell you, I know the best program to put on a Windows computer to block pornography. I know the best program to put on an iPhone to monitor text messages. I know the best program to put on an Android device to, to turn off the time limits. So the things I'm telling you aren't things I like because I think they're good. It's the best program in that category. And I'm just going to give you one for every category across the board. Some of them you're not going to use because you don't have a, a Chromebook or a, 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 an Android device. Most of you and most of our kids are using iPads and iPhones and MacBooks and iMacs. And so we're going to sort of focus on that a little bit. The first thing I want to remind you before we get into some of that software is passwords. Some of you are using a, a spreadsheet on your computer to keep all your kids' passwords. That's great. Love it. It's fantastic. Some of you guys are using an app like OnePass or LastPass or Password Keeper. That's fabulous. Love that too. And then the other half are using sticky notes on a keyboard. And you're experiencing password drama on a weekly basis. Yes, nod your head. You know I'm right. You have to get a password book. You have to get a password book. I've got one for each kid. Names right on the front. Jaden's i account, her iCloud account, her Yahoo account, her Musical.ly account, her Instagram account. If anything ever happens to Jaden, I'm I got the keys to the kingdom. I can figure out exactly what happened. I can help her. I can make her safe. I can keep her safe. Without the passwords, it's too hard. And if it's too hard, I'm gonna turn my head the other way because it's just too hard. Sort of forget that the problem exists because I don't have it. I don't. I can't get it. It's just too hard. You gotta get something. I've brought a dozen or more of these today. I bought them in bulk. I got them for five bucks. I'm not trying to make a dollar off of you. I just want you to know your kids' passwords. So whatever you gotta do, know their passwords and come see me afterwards if you want one of these. It's like an old fashioned address book, right? Just one step above a sticky note. <laughs> has the ABCs down the right side. It has a place for a username and password. And you can put all your kids' passwords in one book or you can get a couple of them. Very important to keep them safe. The other thing that we need to do to keep them safe is make sure that we take these devices out of the bedroom. I'm just going to be blunt with you guys because I know a lot of our kids use these devices in the bedroom. The, 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 the stuff that gets our kids in trouble happens in the bedroom. The sexting, the bullying, the anonymous apps, the pornography, the, ki the hookup apps. They don't happen in the living room. They don't happen in the kitchen. So whatever you got to do to pull the technology out of the private places and put it in the public places, I'm asking you to do. This is also where our kids lose sleep. Homework's done in the living room, homework's done in the dining room, homework's done in the homework space, and we try our hardest. It happens, it happens. My daughter says, hey dad, so-and-so spending the night, we want to do a little snap video where we're doing stop motion, American Girl doll stuff. Can I take my iPad into the bedroom for an hour to do it? Yes, you can. There's exceptions. It's just not the rule uh, because um, that's where all this stuff happens. It, if, if it has to be in the room because there's no other space, just take the door off the hinges and you're good to go. 
This is what we have in our house. This isn't a picture of our house, but it's something similar with a table. We purposefully use desktops because they're difficult to move, unlike laptops. We will migrate to laptops eventually, but you can't just pick up a desktop and take it to the room or the bathroom or a private place. So this helped us a ton. I can tell you the drama in our house has gone down because we can see what they're doing all the time. And because they knew this from the beginning, it's never really been an issue. The sooner you can implement some of these rules, the better. Try to get all the passwords from your 17-year-old. Good luck. Try to get them from your 6-year-old. Put that rule in place and carry it forward. It's not hard at all. We're bigger and smarter than they are until they get to be about 11. Then it gets to be a little bit more difficult. This is what we started with, and it works real well. The other thing that we put in place, and I didn't make this stuff up. I'm not smart enough. I've just been helping parents, and I've taken this from them, and this from them, and this from them. And one parent said, hey, we put all of our phones in a basket. I had uh, babies and toddlers at the time, so it wasn't even on my radar, but she had teenagers. And she figured out that if we make all the kids put their devices in a basket in the kitchen, we can keep them off their devices a little bit, but we can also manage and monitor them because they're here. I took that um, rule when my kids got their very first device and said, this is where we're going to charge them. And it has, again, kept a ton of drama out of our house because they all live in the kitchen at night. Mom's happy because this is the actual one that we use, and all the cords are sort of hidden back behind with hot glue and zip ties. And I got this at a garage sale, 10 bucks. Contracts are another thing that you should consider putting into place. And a contract's just a simple piece of paper that says, here's what you're going to do, and here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to give my daughter her first cell phone. And I'm going to say, here's the rules. It's my phone. I own it. I'm letting you use it. I'm a great dad, aren't I? That's going to be rule number one. Rule number 21 is you're going to mess up, and I'm going to take your phone away, and we're going to work through it. We're going to you know, talk about it. We're on the same page. And in between those two rules, it's my phone, and I'm going to take it from you at some point. In between those, there's a whole bunch of other ones, like you have to answer it if mom or dad calls. That's the rule. You're not going to take pictures of the body parts and send them to strangers. That's a rule. You're not going to use it at the dinner table. That's a rule. You're going to put it in the basket by 8.30 at night. That's a rule. I do not go ask my kids for their devices. I don't have to. You put it in the basket by 8.30 or you lose it. Period. If, if it's not in there at 8.30, I am not coming to your room looking for it. But the next day, you can guarantee you it's going in my pocket. That's the rule. I don't have to ask them ever for their devices. It's just the rule. Make them give it to you because if you have to go get it from them, you're going to pull your hair out and you're going to give up and they're gonna have it. All right, internet safety for social media. Here's my three rules for social media. If your kids are gonna use social media, consider know the platform, know their password, and know their friends. So here's some really cool programs that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna scream through the list. These are uh, great programs for our phone, our iPad, our computer. The first one is Bark. Bark is an app, this is great, if your kid has a lot of social media accounts, now as they get to middle school, they're going to get more and more. And the way Bark works is you put in your, your child's password, username and password for these accounts, and they're putting more on every day. And Bark watches them for you. Now, this is not an excuse to be a, a, you know, a parent that's checked out. You still have to be a parent. But Bark can help you. Now, they're not going to give you a report of everything they do on all these. We don't want that report. We don't have time to read that report. They look for keywords, pornography, bullying, depression, suicide. And if any of these vulgar language, if any of those words come up, they send you a report. TeenSafe is a great app for monitoring text messages. And I'm giving you permission right now to monitor your kids' text messages. Do it. Um, you don't have to read them every day. If you do, you'll probably pull your hair out. It'll be crazy boring for a while. When they get to be 14, 15, it'll probably get a little more interesting. But what I'm saying is I'm giving you permission right now to do it. So TeenSafe is 14 bucks a month. It, it monitors text messages, group text messages, and I know someone's going to ask, so I'll just throw it out there ahead of time. It monitors deleted text messages also. It also monitors the web history and the phone call log of the iPhone, iPad, iTouch. It's a great app. You can put all your kids on it for that $14 a month. You go to the TeenSafe website, you log in, there's their stuff. It's not an app on your phone, and you're not going to get every text message. You're going to go to their website when you need to, which probably isn't that often, to just scan through to make sure things are going well. The Studio is a great program for the computer. Now, get the iPad and the iPhone out of your mind for just a second, okay? Computer, laptop, desktop, we all have them in our houses. Our kids use them, even though they're not using them as much. 
Custodio is a free filter program for that device, and it works great, Mac and PC. It does a couple of other things besides filter. It monitors their um, web history, and it also allows you to do time controls. So I can say the computer turns on or off at a certain time, the internet works for how many hours I want, and these are the categories of internet that it works on. It's a great program. If you put it on one computer, it's free. If you want to put it on all the computers in your house, it's like 49 bucks a year, worth every penny. I've paid it. I have it on my four kids' computers, and it works great. Let me actually demonstrate to you on my phone, because Custodio is so cool, it has an app. And I can open up the app on my phone, and I'll show you right up here on the screen. There's my phone. So I'm going to go to Custodio. It's this app right here. And I can click on Custodio. And remember, computers, we're talking computers right now. I've got my four kids' computers. They're all in school, so the computers are actually turned off right now. I can see that because it says offline. But let's click on Blake's computer. Now, I can see that he was on the computer for about an hour before school this morning. We'll have a talk about that later. <laughs> let's see. He was on the computer from 728 to 825. We leave the house for school at 8.25. <laughs> he gets up about 7.30. My guess is he opened Safari, and then he went and ate breakfast, and then he came back. That's just a guess. But you get the idea. I can see what little Blake did yesterday. Minecraft. YouTube. Anybody see a pattern here with your kid? Minecraft, YouTube, if you got a little boy, that's probably what they're doing. A lot of Minecraft and YouTube. Now, in here, if I want to, I can click the Rules button. And I can click daily time limits right from my phone, and I can set a time limit. You know why he was on it for an hour and 15 minutes this morning? Because I had a time limit for an hour and 15 minutes. Guess what's going to happen when he tries to get on it after school today? Uh-uh. He's going to log in with his password. It's going to go, welcome, right back to the password. <laughs> welcome, right back to the password. Dad, my computer's broke. No, it's not. Ha <laughs> I got the power. So yesterday, Blake had a time limit of two hours. Today he's got a time limit of one hour. Tomorrow, 45 minutes. It's not looking good for him. Saturday, 30 minutes. Sunday, 15 minutes. It's going downhill this week. Most of the time, I just have it set for unlimited. I use this to control them when I need to, not all the time. Now, Life360 is an app that allows me and my family to see where everybody is. So I get to see where my wife is, my wife gets to see where I am, my kids can see where I am, and I can see where my kids are. This is what I call family location awareness. Now you're going, uh-oh, <laughs> oh no, my husband's not going to like this app very much. Here's good news for your husband. You can, as the head of the house, right, man of the house, I don't want anybody to see where I am because I'm a private man, I can click this button right here. And I can say, location sharing off. I don't want to share my location. So I don't have to share my location with the rest of my family. But I can, and I do. And it works great for our family. There's three phones in my family. My wife and my daughter are in Corona where we live. Let's click on my daughter, because this is a lot of fun. And right now she's at El Cerrito Middle School. And she went there this morning at 8.40, she got there at 8.55. It was four minute drive. Those are surface streets. My wife should not have been going 65 miles an hour. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun dinner at the Burnett house. <laughs> but let's take a look at yesterday because this is a really cool app. Now this shows me, this button right here, this pathway button, shows me Jaden's path today from home to school. And I can click the little dots to see about what time she was in what location. This is like Little Red Riding Hood dropping a breadcrumb trail wherever I go. But here's where it gets really fun if you like technology. Let's look at yesterday. I'm going to click this button right up here and let's look at where my daughter went yesterday. Yesterday my daughter's school took a field trip to Knott's Berry Farm. And I can see exactly when she left and when she went. I can see two pathways traveling down the 91 freeway and this is where it gets really fun. That's cool. I can see exactly where my daughter went yesterday. And it gets even cooler if you like Jack Bauer in 24 and you think technology is great. Let's see where my daughter really was yesterday. I called my daughter and said, guess what? I know 
right now that you're on the boomerang. She goes, Dad, are you here? <laughs> Where are you? I said, no, I just see that you're in line for the boomerang. This is a pretty cool, fun little app. And guess what? It's free. I can see where they are, they can see where I'm. I don't get calls, Dad, are you on the way yet? She just looks and sees if I'm on the way. So they have I, to have an iPhone. No, this works great on an Android phone. It works on a Blackberry, it works on a Windows phone. It works with everybody, huh? They, this doesn't track your kid, that's microchip. <laughs> like your pet, this tracks their phone. I had someone say yesterday, this isn't really working well. I said, no, no, no. This is telling you exactly where your 16-year-old's phone is. It's not telling you where your 16-year-old is because he left it at Billy's house before he went to the pier last night. Yeah, but it's a really cool app. But there's a cooler app than Life Your 60. It actually gets better. And it's called RPACT. Has anybody used RPACT? Now, for two years, RPACT has been out and it's been great. And what RPACT has allowed us to do as parents is turn off all the apps on our kid's device with one click from our phone. So I can put our pack up on my phone and I can jump onto Zach's iPod. There's my little guy, Zach, and he's got an iPod. It says, or iTouch. And I can block Zach. And when I click block, I can specify how long I want to block. And when I click block, all of the apps on Zach's phone go away. This is awesome. I, I love to choose my favorite one in this list is um, until I say so. That's a great one. So when I say done, that says granted, and now it says block. All of the apps on Zach's iTouch, which is sitting in the kitchen because he doesn't take it to school, just disappeared just now. But I, but 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 um, our pact is even better than that. Three weeks ago, our pact came out with an update, and the update now allows me to do something that parents have asked me for for two years, and I actually got giddy when I heard it. I can now turn off just a single app. I can now turn off just Musical.ly, just Instagram. And parents have said, oh, if I turn off the apps, what goes off? And my answer was always, everything goes off except the apps that came on the phone. So text messaging stayed, phone calls stayed, email stayed. The apps that went away was Quizlet and Minecraft, and all the games, but school apps went away too, and that wasn't fun. It was, it was great because I could control it at nighttime, but it wasn't super great. Now, our pack is super great. This button right here allows me to go in, and not only can I see what apps are on Zach's iPod, but I can say that one is gone. That one is allowed. That one is blocked. That's an upper phone then the ones in the middle are controlled by the schedule. If I turn this schedule on, every app on my daughter's device that's in the middle goes off at those times. Every app that I say on the right never goes off, and every app that I say on the left never goes on. This is ultimate parental control for the iOS device, and it works great. I've been using it for two weeks, it only came out three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Uh, I've set it up about a dozen times. I've had a couple of issues. The one problem with this is it's not super easy to put in. It took me about an hour per device, and I won't get into the details of why. You gotta make sure the phone's up to date, the iPad has the newest firmware, you gotta make sure that it's backed up first. There's some things you gotta go through, but it's not impossible, and I can certainly come over and help you, but this has been fantastic. All right, um, one more. Before I leave the phone, I'm gonna show you how to turn on the filter. So there's a built-in filter on every iOS device. So phone, iPad, iTouch, iPod. There's a built-in filter. It takes 30 seconds to put on, it doesn't cost a penny. I'm gonna show you how right now. We're gonna go into settings. From settings, I'm gonna go to general. From general, I'm gonna go to restrictions. Now by default, restrictions are off, so you gotta turn them on first. Real easy to do. I'm gonna turn restrictions on. When I turn restrictions on by clicking enable restrictions, it's going to ask me for a password. Do not use the phone password. Do not use a password your child knows. This is a password for you to use that allows you to turn the restrictions on and off. So you're going to use a new password. Don't lose it. You can't reset it. I'm going to use 0000. Don't use that one. That's a dumb one. I'm just using it for now. So now the restrictions are enabled but they're really not. I've just put the password on and turned the feature on. 
There's 23 things I can do now as a parent on my kid's device. I'm just going to show you three of them and let you play with the rest later. I can turn Safari off if I want. Our pact will also do this, but this is just within the phone itself. I can go down and turn the filter on right here under websites. I can go into websites and I can say limit adult content. When I do that, I put Safari in filtered mode. And right above that feature, I can go into apps and I can say, I'm only going to let you use apps that are rated 12 plus. That's not 12 and under, that's 12 and over. So social media apps would be allowed under this category. 17 plus, those are adult apps. Apps that have a sexual nature, a hookup nature, a bullying nature, a predator nature, an adult nature are all in the 17 plus category. If I take 17 plus off on the phone, these apps aren't allowed because they're all 17 plus apps. One reason why we got to make sure we know what our kids are doing. So all of the kids in my family have this on their device. Even my six year old, it's 12 plus because the only apps I'm worried about are these ones. So this is what it looks like in our family. Turn it off, and we're back here. So we talked about Custodio, we talked about um, Life360, we talked about our pact, and we talked about the filter. So those four things I just showed you on the phone, they're great, we'd love to come over and help you put them on, but they're not hard, and there's links in the handout for the instructions on how you guys can do it yourself. If anybody has a child that uses an Android device, this is the app you want. I won't spend a lot of time on it because they're not super duper popular right now, but Android devices are certainly in homes and Phenomo is the app that you want that does filtering, monitoring, parental control, time control. Um, Bloxy, if anybody here uses a Chromebook, I told you I'm going to give you one app for each device. Phenomo is for the Android, a Chromebook, it's called Bloxy. This is a great free filter that does app control, it does time control, um, it, it's an extension and it goes into Chrome and it works really, really well. It's B-L-O-C-K-S-I. It's not in your handout. So if you want to use Bloxy on a Chromebook, write down and just Google Bloxy filter for Chromebook and it'll come right up. And it, uh, YouTube and Google, super great. Josh is going to put Google up on the screen and I'm going to show you how to make Google safe. If you go to Google and you click in the lower right hand corner on settings and you go up to search settings on Google, you have this feature called safe search. It's off by default. You want to turn it on. Turn safe search on and then click lock safe search. It's then going to ask you for your Gmail username and password, right? And that's going to allow you to lock Google in safety mode. If you don't have a Gmail password, ask your children to help you create one. Just don't tell them what the password is because the password to your Google account will unlock Google safety mode. Now, YouTube bought Google, so the exact same thing exists on YouTube. And if I scroll down to the bottom of YouTube, I have restricted mode. And restricted mode in YouTube is off by default. And if I want to make YouTube safe, I just click on restricted mode on, and then again, I sign in in order to lock it in safe mode. YouTube is completely different when restrictions are turned on. Google is completely different when safety mode is turned on. YouTube Kids is the app that I talked about that we put on on our kids' devices for YouTube, and it's just 100,000 family-friendly, safe YouTube videos. All the do-it-yourself videos are there, all the bead videos, some instructional videos, the, the hoop shot from the end of the football field into the basketball, that's all there. It, but the adult videos, the risque videos, are not there. Kittle is a homepage. I've turned our computers and made the homepage Kittle. Now, you know what a homepage is, right? You turn on the internet, you go to Yahoo, Google, Apple, whatever it is, AOL. <laughs> um, Kittle is just Google safe search, that's all it is. It's in the handout, it's spelled K-I-D-D-L-E dot C-O. It's not a misspelling in the handout. It says Kittle dot C-O, and you think, oh, Scott forgot the M. No, I didn't. It's Kittle dot C-O. We've made this our homepage. It's Google Safe Search for Kids. Now, my kids can still go to Google. They can still type in Google.com, but why? When they want to search something and this is the page that comes up, again, everything I can do to lower the risk a little bit and keep safe searches and safe YouTubes in place, I'm going to do. Web Watcher, last program I'm probably going to talk about, maybe two more. Web Watcher is what you would put on a computer to monitor everything on that computer. 
with um, Mac or PC, it's called a keystroke logger. It records everything. Parents always say, I don't know my kids' passwords, how do I get them? Number one, ask, you're the mom, <laughs> you're the dad, you should be able to do that. If you can't do that, I completely get it. Our kids can be pretty powerful and pretty demanding and sometimes it's just hard and you're not up to the battle, I get it. This will help you get the password. This will help you get all their passwords. And I always get asked, but, but Scott, my kids use an iPad and an iPhone. They don't go on the computer. Take the iPhone and the iPad away for two days and you'll have all their passwords. Because they'll go to Instagram on the computer, they'll go to Gmail on the computer, they'll go to Apple on the computer, they'll go to Amazon on the computer, PayPal. You got all their passwords now and then give them their phone back. And it works <coughs> like a charm. This records passwords, this records websites, this records everything. It's not for everybody. I'm not saying go spy on your kids. You can if you want to. This is the last one I'm going to talk about, and it's called Circle. It's made by a company in Garden Grove. They came out with it about a year ago. It's so cool that Disney bought them, just like that. Guy in Circle's probably in Cabo right now, sitting on a beach, drinking a martini, a few million dollars in the bank. Worked for a year to make a really cool device. This device goes into your house on your network. It plugs in right next to your router, 99 bucks. It identifies all the devices in your house and allows you to name them the Xbox, the PlayStation, the iPad, the Apple TV, the Nest camera. After you've named them all, you get an app like this, and you can see the traffic per device. Tumblr, five minutes. YouTube, five minutes. Disney, 45 minutes. Facebook, on. HBO, off. Netflix, on. Pinterest, on. I can see the filtering level of each device in the house. I want to turn the Xbox off at 9 o'clock. One button on my iPhone turns the Xbox off. This controls the traffic in your house with the app. Now, if you link this device to this child, this device to this child, this device to this child, I can click on Billy and turn off all of Billy's devices. His iPhone, his iPad, his computer, his Xbox. Internet off, just those four. If I click the middle button, I can turn the internet off on everything in the house. So this is a time control, app control, device control for the home, and I know that it works really well um, because we've set it up, and I've got customers every time I see them, Scott, this is the greatest device ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It takes a little bit of time because we've got to identify the devices and give them names and link them to your kids, but then it'll work for a few years and give you some control. I can also put time restrictions on Netflix, on music, on Minecraft, per device. It can be complicated, it can actually be overly complicated, but even if you only use 5% of this device, that's all you have to use. You don't have to use all of it, everything that it does. It's pretty cool. So here's my final tips, last page. Find out what your kids are doing. There's apps I told you about to help monitor your kids, like Bark, like Web Watcher, like RPAC, like Circle. Also know the passwords of your kids' accounts. I can't stress enough what you guys need to do to get their passwords. Please see me after or see Josh and we'll sell you a password book for five bucks. Or go to Staples and they have them there. You'll pay 10 bucks, but you can still do it. I don't care. Uh, and we'll be happy to sell you one. Remove technology at nighttime. Please remove technology at nighttime. That's where the dangerous stuff happens. Monitor social media. I've given you some tools to help monitor social media. Set up screen-free zones. We don't use our devices at the dinner table. That's pretty common. But we also don't use them in the car unless it goes on the freeway. We got this rule from another parent and it works fabulous. The car goes on the freeway, you betcha. That means we're gonna be in the car for a while. We'll pass out the iPads, iPhones. Yes, you can use it, that's great. The little jaunts to soccer and swimming and gymnastics and hockey and school, no, that's just a headache for mom and dad. So what have my kids done now? Dad, can you take us to school via the 91 today? <laughs> no, we're not going to school on the freeway. Come on, dad, I know what you're trying to do, little guy. Um, talk to your kids about technology. We have this thing in our house called Tech Talk Tuesdays. At the dinner table on Tuesday night, we just talk about technology. What apps are your kids using at school? What's the cool websites that you guys like to play on? What's new on Minecraft? So we just limit it, technology, Tuesdays, and we just try to, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but that's what we like to do. Thank you. Thanks for letting me go over.